Hi, Noble Elf. I'm making some video responses on behalf of Rational Dawn. When I asked Noah if he had any in mind that he would like me to respond to, he pointed me your way. And we have a lot to talk about. Um, I'll be reading most of what I have to say here because you make a very complicated argument and um, I want to make sure that I say everything that I want to say. So I apologize if it's not too personal. <coughs> um, yeah, yikes, dude. This, this whole thing is, is really a mess. Um, and I've, I've been really, I've been mulling this over for three nights. I actually got a nightmare from this ridiculousness. And I, I'm, I, I think I've, I've decided where I need to start, and I'll just start at the beginning. I had a different idea in mind, but just to give people a taste of, of things to come here in this, in this video, which I assume will, will, will reach over into two, um, is that you start off, you just, you start off on the wrong foot. Everything that follows is just a conundrum, but you start off on the wrong foot with your, what you call a premise, your first premise, uh, where you claim that if the word God refers to nothing, then God doesn't exist. Um, first off, it's, it's not a premise, and, and most of what you call a premise are not premises, premises they're, they're uh, arguments. The premise is actually latent within the argument. The premise is within the, uh, the if clause, and the consequent is in the then clause. You can't have an if-then statement and call it a premise. But ignoring even that, your argument here, what I suppose you could call a supporting arg argument in place of a premise, is that if the word God refers to nothing, then God doesn't exist is just wrong. Um, it would seem to me that your goal here is to classify, looking again, like I said, just studying this bizarre treatment over and over and over again. It feels like I've, I've had to teach myself Elvish just to understand it. What it seems you want to do is classify all words into one of two categories, what you call a definite description or a proper name. And then you want to systematically go through and demonstrate how the word God, <coughs> because it's worshipped by more than one person, and for another of other complicated reasons, uh, doesn't qualify for either of those definitions, and therefore you conclude that it refers to nothing, and in referring to nothing, can't exist. Even if God did not exist, the word God will always refer to something. In the case that God doesn't exist, the word God will refer to a logical inconsistency um, or, or a, you know, say like a contradiction or something of that sort. What you seem to want to do is make a classification of words that are inherently meaningless, that by just dialectic virtue are inherently meaningless. But that is impossible because no word has inherent meaning, you see. Words are merely signs. They're utterances that are attached to things that are not words. They're attached to ideas. I, I refer you to Jeff. Jeff likes to be pointed out for this. I refer you to Jeff, our buddy Azrianok, and his treatment of late Wittgenstein for more information. I mean, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Um, if God doesn't exist, the word God will not refer to nothing. It will refer to something. It will just refer to something that doesn't exist like a logical inconsistency or something that, that of that kind. On top of that, the form of your argument is all wrong. Like I said, not only are most of your premises here actually arguments, <laughs> but then, then you stick two premises in there that are blatantly contradicting. The one saying that uh, Christians and Muslims worship the same God and then saying that they don't worship the same God. And then you draw. I don't. I don't even. I don't even know what you're doing. And then some of your conclusions are drawn not from just your premises, but they're drawn from conclusions and premises. And you mix and jumble, and it just—it's a piece of crap. Not you, sir, but your work is. It's crap. There's not a lot that can be done. Um, <clears throat> also, your treatment of the—you gave us two ideas here. Descriptive, no, distinct descriptions and what you call uh, mutual proper names. 
your treatment of the word proper name is wrong in that you just sort of boldly assert that they must be empirically derived. We can have <coughs> all sorts of proper names for things that are nowhere in the empirical world. If you know who, say, um, I don't know, Huckleberry Finn is, that is a person that is not derived from the empirical world yet has a proper name. Are you making stuff up as you go, sir? That's how it seems to me. But much more interestingly is your treatment of the word, of, of your term, distinct description. Is that what you called it? And you explained to us that the word God cannot be a distinct description because of a molus tollens argument or the result of a, mo a molus tollens model. You mention it. You mention it so brief. And this is why it took me so long to wade through this is because it's so brief in your video. And had you fleshed out that molus tollens, you would have seen the error. You would have. You're an intelligent guy. But you didn't. I wonder even if you worked it out on paper first. Um, so let's see what you did. Uh, Amola's Tolens, for people who are, are, are not, don't have that readily available, it's talking about a relationship between two terms that are always in, have a relationship with each other. They're always present. When the one's present, they're always present. And so from that, if we can say that one isn't present, then the other isn't present. And it's as simple as that. Um, classically, we refer to P's and Q's, and it would follow something like, if P, then Q. That's the relationship we recognize. And Modus Tollens says, without Q, then there is also no P. Okay. So back to you, urban elf. But maybe you needed a refresher of that, too. Modus Tollens works with two terms, P and Q. Two, two, two. But your argument asserts three. You have the term definite description. You have the definition of your term definite description. And then shoved in there is this argument about whether or not Christians and Muslims uh, worship the same God or whether or not they worship mutually exclusive concepts of God. Now that being all said, <clears throat> the conclusion of a modus tollens is something like, uh, what, then no Q. If no or P, then Q, no P, then no Q. And that's what you want. That's, and you're interested in, in having it say at the very end, um, the word God is not a definite description. That's the whole point here. You're, you are you. You try to knock it out of proper name of the proper name category because you just assert that all proper names are empirically derived, and in this one, you say that a Mullins Tolan's argument leaves you to believe, or leaves us to justifiably believe that the word God is not a definite description. But you have to use you have to use a little trickery here to achieve that. 